You're God all by yourself. Yes. Now, Lord, teach us how to wait. Yes. To wait on yes. the Lord and to be of good courage. Yes. And he will strengthen us. Yes. like these when so many people are experiencing bereavement yes. and now Lord go with Reverend Carolyn Hemingway and her family Lord as she has transitioned from labor to reward Father you know what the family stands in the need of touch them right now in the name of Jesus and Father we will ever give your name the praise out and the glory for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Let the church of the living God say amen. 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 And amen. I want to call your attention to 1 Peter, the second chapter, reading verses 9 through 11. 1 Peter, the second chapter, reading verses 9 through and 10. Hear the word of the Lord. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. For the moments that are mine, I want to use for a subject or a title, Finding Your Identity in Christ. Finding Your Identity and Christ. Today, more than ever, we are finding individuals who have the desire to be like someone else. For those persons who desire to become singers, they find themselves idolizing people like Beyonce or Alicia Keys or even Michael Jackson. For individuals who desire to find themselves on the big screen, they find themselves idolizing people like Tyler Perry or Denzel Washington or Holly Berry. It really doesn't matter what we desire to become. Many of us have in our heads someone or something that we idolize. However, when we become believers, when we become part of the body of Christ, we must ask ourselves how important it is to identify with this man named Jesus. The Bible says that if any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ, they are considered to be a new creation, a new creature. The Bible goes on to say that all things uh, have passed away and behold, all things have become new. When we place that text or that pericope under the microscope, it, it reminds us that being a new creation in Christ also means that we have access to new power. 
The Holy Spirit now works in us and through us and it helps us to live and to be the person that God desires for each and every one of us to be. For the Bible reminds us that we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uppermost parts of the earth. One of the reasons why this country is so messed up is because we are trying to find our identity in other things. We find folks thinking that it's some type of privilege to call themselves a liberal or progressive. We, we find people taking or thinking that it's something uh, to be a conservative or a tea party. And what we don't understand is that when we use labors to describe ourselves, we run the risk of allowing those labels to take over us and to take control of us rather than allowing the spirit to dictate to us who we ought to be. Regardless of these labels, if we say that we are a Christian, then we ought to do what a Christian is supposed to do. The Bible says that if we see our brothers and are our sisters in need and shut up our hearts from him, how does the love of God dwell or abide in him? In other words, how can we go to Washington, D.C. and sit in our chambers and make up laws and develop bills that we know that will not help everybody, that we're only concerned for a certain socioeconomic group, or we're only concerned about somebody whose hue is different, we're only concerned about the few, but I stop by to let somebody know that when you're in God and God is in you, that you should care about everybody. We have become a nation that has lost our identity of being Christ-like. When we examine our text, we must remember the life and the legacy of Peter. We must remember how Peter was always the one who would speak out of turn. Peter would always be the one who would always have to give a comment about something, whether he knew what he was talking about or not. But there is no doubt in my mind that Peter often reflected on the conversation that he had with Jesus. The Bible sets the scene for us and said that they had gone on a ministerial retreat, that they were in the region of Caesarea Philippi, and there Jesus gathered the twelve disciples and apostles together, and he began to ask them and said to them, who do men say that the Son of Man am? And they begin to reply and they begin, Jesus, some, some think you're John the Baptist, others think you're Elijah, some think you're Jeremiah, some really don't know, but they just think that you are one of the prophets. No doubt Jesus really wanted to get to the heart of the matter. Jesus was really concerned about what the people were saying when they were supposed to be preaching and teaching the people. So Jesus asked them, well, who do you see that I am? Then all of a sudden, Simon Peter got it right. All of a sudden, Simon Peter listened to what the Lord said, and Simon Peter says, you are the Christ. You, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living 
God. And Jesus replied to Peter, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood. You, you didn't get this off the internet. You didn't read this off of Facebook. You didn't get this off of Instagram. But the Lord thy God gave you an instant revelation. And Peter, I tell you, upon this rock, I build my church and not the gates of hell will prevail against it. Peter remembered that conversation. He remembered that conversation so much so that when he began to pin this epistle, he began by sharing with the people of God and those persons who believed that they saw Jesus as precious. But then Peter goes on to say that those that did not see the Savior as precious, those that rejected him, those that despised him, he said to them that those that were obedient and disobedient to them, he said those are they that the builders rejected, that they rejected Jesus, that they did not serve Jesus, that they didn't lift him up, they didn't magnify his name. But Peter says, but that's all right. Let me remind you that you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. And that you may proclaim the praises of God for he has brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you for where he's brought you from. Because God created all of us to become like Christ. There are just three Lessons that we can find in 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 9 through 10. The first lesson that I want you to know is that we are acceptable. Somebody say acceptable. acceptable. The Bible says that you are a chosen generation. You have been chosen by God. God chose you before everything. Oh, Ephesians 1 and 4, for say he chose us in him before the creation of the world. And he found us to be holy and blameless in his sight. Yes, God chose us before he made the heaven and the earth. Before he hung the moon and the stars, God chose us. You are acceptable unto God. And the psalmist reminds us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We must understand that this acceptance is a gift. From God, you, you may have to pledge a sorority or fraternity, and not everybody to them is acceptable. You, you, you may go out for a basketball or a cheerleader. You may throw your name in the hat to be on uh, in the beta club or the National Honor Society. You may not be chosen. In life, you may try to find um, your niche in social groups or social networks, but I stop by to let somebody know to God, you are more than enough. You are acceptable just as you are. Being sun kissed, thick lips, naughty hair, it doesn't matter. God chose you. I don't know how you feel about that this morning, but that makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah. It makes me feel good that I'm acceptable to God, that God can use me 
as he sees fit. God will take me just as I am. Thank you, God, for choosing me. Thank you, God, for calling me. Thank you, God, for commissioning me. Thank you, God, for accepting me. But not only does the Bible say that we are acceptable, but can I tell you that we are valuable? Yes. Yes. He goes on to say that, that we are a royal priesthood, that we are a holy nation, his own special people. In other words, we belong to God. Yes, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but that's, that's something. We are priceless. Nobody can not put a value on who we are when it comes to God. God made us to be special. God has set us apart. Then we must understand that value comes from who owns it. Who owns you this morning? Have you been bought with a price? Do you belong to God? The, the, the Bible says, consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom nor a barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? God loves you unconditionally. God wants to see your success. God has your best in mind. Yes, you are valuable. We must understand that a pen in our hand is not the same as a pen in the hands of Mario Angelo. We, we may understand that a basketball in my hand is not the same as a basketball in the hands of LeBron James. The question is, who do you belong to? Do you belong to God? Does God belong to you? You are somebody. You are valuable. You are priceless. We can't put a price tag on you because God did not make junk. He made you to be something Extraordinary. Oh, this morning, if we are indeed going to find our identity in Christ, we need to know that we are acceptable. Don't have to go through the burning sands. We, 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 we don't have to be hazed. Well, oh, but all you have to do is trust God. And when you trust God, God will take care of you. That's why the, the men of the church would remind us that down through the years, the Lord been good to us. Because we're more than enough. Because we're acceptable. Because we are valuable. But can I tell you that we are lovable? That we are eternally loved. He says, but you are a chosen generation. This millennial generation has been talked about more than probably any other generation. The sociologists go and every generation, they, they look at the baby boomers, they, they, they look at Every generation, generation X, generation Y, generation Z. And they begin to, 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 to give you labels. But I stop by to let you know, millennials, that you have been chosen by God. All God is asking you to do is to take your rightful place. Not only has God chosen you, but God says that you are not only part of the priesthood, but you are a royal priesthood that you belong to the king of kings and to the lord of lords. That not only are you chosen, not only are you royalty, 
but you are a holy nation. You are his own special people. You belong to God. You were once not a people. Oh, but now are the people of God who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And because God loves you, his grace and his mercy will carry you through. You are love. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. God's love is unconditional and unending. His love goes from generation to generation. The Bible says that Jesus demonstrated his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, he died on the cross. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. But he loved us all the way to the grave. From the cross. To the grave, from the grave to glory, God still loves us. And I know we love for the children to sing it, but every now and again, us adults need to sing it. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Yes! Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. I know he loves me. How do you know he loves you, preacher? He continues to look beyond my fault and meet my every need. I know he loves me. He died for me. But more importantly, he lived for me. Is there anybody here that knows that the Lord loves you? Is there anybody here know that you're valuable? Is there anybody here know that you're acceptable? like somebody else. I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jesus. So high and holy. So meek and lowly. Oh, I want to be like him. Find your identity in Christ Jesus. We are acceptable. We are valuable. And we are lovable. Come on, Melissa's choir.
certainly want to remind each and every one of you that it's important for us to find our identity in Christ. That's what brings us together. It's not our political affiliations. It's not where we stand social and economically, but it's where we find our place in Jesus. It is the kindred spirits that bind us together. And when we have identity in Jesus, that means we have a purpose, we have a mission, we have a desire to do the work of the Lord and to continue the mission that Jesus set forth here on earth. I want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, trustees will meet today in the fellowship hall following morning worship. Asking you to meet in the fellowship hall with trustees. Asking all the ushers to meet uh, this coming Thursday, August 25th at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Um, as you already know, uh, we are gearing up for the annual conference and we need all hands uh, on deck, uh, not just the few, but we need Lottie, Dottie, and who? Everybody. Everybody. Uh, that's more than enough work to go around. And so if we come together collectively, um, if you ain't never usher and you want to usher, um, <laughs> we'll find a place for you. <laughs> Amen. Only thing that we ask that you don't start trying to do is work in the kitchen and cook if you don't know how to. Um, but there's a place and there's a seat uh, for everyone. Also, um, we're going to um, have for you uh, those persons. We're going to do a like a pre-order when it comes to the souvenir journal. Um, um, it is uh, a labor of love. Um, it is the journal, an opportunity for you to be able to uh, not only to look at the work the, of the local church, um, not only to look at the work of the Marion District, not only to look at the work of the Northeast Conference, but to also to look at the work of the Episcopal uh, District. Um, and um, you don't want to be the one that's left out, that's not having one. Um, and those, of course, who get a full page, you automatically get one. Um, but for those who want to order it and perhaps uh, share it with other person um, as a keepsake, um, this will be your opportunity. Uh, the cost of the journal is uh, $30. And so we want to try to get um, those persons to know up front so that we can place an order um, uh, that will be close to what we need to have. We don't want to have too many extra uh, lying around, but at the same time, we don't want to uh, not have one for a person who wants to get one. Uh, just give you an idea, just to give persons who bought a full page will be over 100 books. Um, and, and so the journal, article, uh, journal, assuming that journal has done very, very well, uh, um, more than I would have um, um, expected. But that's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. The Bible said that God gives what? The increase. And so that is our prayer for this annual conference, that God will give us the increase. And so, um, again, uh, we will not um, uh, meet um, tomorrow. We'll meet next Monday. But that gives you a week to begin to continue to work. Uh, those chairpersons, so that when we meet the last Monday of August, uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot of questions. There should be more 
this is what we have done, uh, what we're going to do. Uh, in the meanwhile, if you have any questions about anything, uh, certainly uh, reach out uh, to me. Uh, we were in Charleston um, uh, this past uh, uh, Thursday uh, uh, to get a glimpse of the Palmetto uh, Conference. And, uh, and so we are going to be ready, and we know that God is going to show up, and God is going to show up. On today at 3 p.m., we'll be at St. John Emmy Church for our victory celebration. And so we're calling um, and asking everyone uh, to come out to St. John uh, that we may celebrate our last uh, time together as a district, um, as we celebrate uh, what God and how God has blessed us uh, this whole year. Uh, we, can't, we can't blame things on the pandemic. Why? Because God has kept us. Yeah. Um, and God showed us that he's a keeper. Yeah. And so we celebrate. Yeah. And so we have some guests uh, today that's uh, visiting Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Franklin Douglas. We have uh, Gloria uh, Williams. And, uh, and, and as somebody was writing, their writing got a little smaller. And, uh, <laughs> And I don't want to mess up the last name, so I'm going to ask Gloria and that other person that they will stand and uh, uh, introduce themselves. Hi, good morning. I'm Gloria Williams. I'm the niece of Mr. and Mrs. Franklin Douglas, and this is my granddaughter, Cam. Cam. What's Cam's last name? Muller. Muller, okay. All right. Well, we're glad to have you. Uh, with us today. Thank you for coming. It is our prayer that through the uh, singing, through the praise, through the prayers, and through the preach word, that uh, you will be blessed and leave here better than you've come. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give her a hand. Clap for you. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity and to continue to, to pray. Uh, we know that um, uh, uh, pretty much all of our students, uh, whether they're in elementary, uh, middle, or uh, high college, have uh, began school. And so um, it is our prayer that God will cover them while they're there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep them yeah. to do hurt, harm, or danger. And, uh, and we'll celebrate with them next Sunday as we celebrate our youth and uh, as they are going uh, back to school. God will continue to dispatch the angels of mercy uh, all around them. Yes, Amen. 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 Let us stand. All things come of thee, O Lord.
that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Ah! 